from the CBS Broadcast Center in Philadelphia. This is CBS 3 Eyewitness News. Clearly, it was reckless uh, in terms of the uh, driving uh, by uh, the engineer. There's no way in the world uh, that uh, he should have been going that fast into uh, the curb. All eyes are on the engineer this morning. We now know he was going more than 100 miles per hour when the speed limit was just 50. So what went wrong? Investigators are still combing the wreckage for clues this morning. Eyewitness News reporter Jan Carabeo joins us. Now she is back out at that scene with the latest information for us. Jan? Erica and Yuki, a lot of work remains here on scene starting today. Investigators, we are told, will likely remain here throughout the week, and some new equipment was even just brought in a few minutes ago. Also happening very soon, investigators want to start talking to the train's crew as well as some passengers. Now, take a look at the video. This was actually taken by NTSB on scene at the crash site. This is a very, very, de very developing investigation right now. What we know at this point is just how fast this train was traveling before. For the accident. It was actually speeding down these tracks at more than twice the limit. The NTSB says the train was traveling at 106 miles per hour, coming into a very sharp curve in the tracks. They say the train's engineer did apply the emergency brake, but just moments before derailment, not enough time to slow down this train. The limit there is just 70 miles per hour. Now, the train's black box and front mounted camera have both been recovered. Investigators hope those provide vital clues, but the big questions remain. What was this engineer doing? and why was he going so fast? We plan to interview the train crew and other personnel. We would like to interview uh, passengers of the train. We will be conducting a site distance test. We'll be testing the signal system, the train control signals. We'll be testing the braking system and a detailed analysis instead of the uh, cursory uh, analysis that I mentioned earlier of the recorders will be doing a very detailed uh, download and analysis of those recorders. Our mission is to find out not only what happened, but why it happened so that we can prevent it from happening again. That's really what we're here for. Now, a lot remains unclear this morning, especially about the background of this engineer. Of course, the NTSB wants to talk to him, but they also want to give him a couple of days to recover. This deadly accident has killed at least seven people and injured more than 200. We're going to remain at the scene and bring you updates just as soon as we get them. But for now, we are live in Port Richmond. Jan Carabeo, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Jan. Now, Amtrak service, of course, is still affected this morning from this crash. Yeah, it could be for a while. Victoria's here now with what you need to know if you are planning to take the train today. Victoria? Thank you so much. Yuki and uh, Erica, and good morning, everyone. Yeah, as of right now, Amtrak service is still suspended between Philadelphia and New York. Let's take a look at our mass transit checklist, and we'll run down uh, the whole list here. If you're traveling the Trenton line, uh, you cannot. It has been suspended. The AC rail line will be shuttle busing between Pensacola and 30th Street Station. West Trenton has added additional trains due to increased volume. Also, the Market Frankfurt line is making all stops as a result of that same uh, increased volume. And also, New Jersey Transit will be crossing. Honoring. Now, if you are traveling in and around Frankfurt Junction, keep in mind that Frankfurt and Castor are being directed by police, and Wee Sheaf Lane is still closed between Frankfurt and Aramingo. We will continue to keep you updated when we get more updates uh, as soon as they happen. Now, in the Bustleton section, Grant Avenue is closed at Welsh, right around Alberger. We're going to take a live look at that incident now. If you are traveling in and around this portion of the Northeast, this is right at, if you're traveling down Welsh, or if you're traveling down Welsh, rather, right, Grant Avenue is more of a residential street. It's not like what you're thinking at Grant Plaza. It's right at the curve as you make that right uh, from uh, Vary Road onto Alberger. It's a very serious curve there and definitely accident prone and police are directing traffic here as well. We'll continue to keep you updated, but for now, let's get a check uh, with back with Yuki. All right, Victoria, thanks so much. Let's get a check of our forecast right now. We'll continue with our derailment coverage in just a bit. And Katie, just a nice kind of sunshiny day today, hitting what, 70 something degrees? Yeah, we should easily get into the very seasonable territory of the mid 70s here today, but we have started off on a very cool and clear note, granted. And usually, you know, when you've got cloud cover overhead, it'll help act essentially as a blanket to trap in the heat that you had a chance to build up from the day before. We don't have that this time, so temperatures have taken a pretty significant hit by comparison, and you'll see that reflected in the numbers in a second. But storm scan, hey, that's empty. Gorgeous sunrise currently underway. Beware 
where the sun glare that's going to get you this morning. Meanwhile, look at the difference in the last 24 hours. Generally 10 to almost 15 degrees cooler by comparison. You'll notice that it's thankfully nowhere near as breezy, but there is still a hint of that breeze depending on location. Philadelphia International stands out to me right here. North wind at 10 miles per hour. You'll notice that if you're waiting for an economy shuttle perhaps to get you to the airport out in that parking lot. Meanwhile, taking it forward in the forecast here, we eventually skyrocket to the low mid 70s. It's right where we should be. In fact, dead on with the seasonable norm for the day. The record was 92 degrees. Far cry from that today, but still a really nice day coming up. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you. The engineer in control of the Amtrak derailed train, Brandon Bastian. Yeah, the NTSB wants to talk to him and get his account of what happened when the train traveling more than twice its allowed speed jumped the tracks Tuesday night. Eyewitness News reporter Nicole Brewer joins us now with more on the investigation. Nick. Yeah, good morning to you yeah. guys. You know, despite giving that initial statement to police and volunteering a blood sample, the 32 year old from New York has not spoken with the NTSB and has instead hired a lawyer. Now, at this point, the only information surfacing about engineer Brandon Boston comes via social media. On his LinkedIn page, he says he began his career with Amtrak in July of 2006, working first as a passenger conductor, then four years later as an engineer. Now, just hours after that crash, we know the Queens resident changed his profile picture to a black square in an apparent attempt to hide his identity. Now, following the crash, he was treated at the hospital and released, but his unwillingness to speak struck a chord with Mayor Michael Nutter. The chairman of the NTSB, though, says they will not pass judgment before they have the facts. This uh, person has gone through a very traumatic event, and uh, we, we want to give uh, him uh, an opportunity to uh, to um, convalesce uh, for a day or so before we interview him, but that is certainly a high priority for us. Clearly, it was reckless uh, in terms of the uh, driving uh, by uh, the engineer. There's no way in the world uh, that uh, he should have been going that fast. Now, Mayor Nutter went on to say there is no excuse unless that engineer was suffering from heart attack. Comments the NTSB has said you will not hear them make. Now, at the point of impact, the train was traveling double the recommended speed as it approached the Frankfurt Junction uh, curve there. The NTSB says Boston did apply full emergency brakes, but it was simply too late. So again, this investigation is still ongoing, and the NTSB is simply saying until we have the facts, we're just mm -hmm. keeping it simple. I think I heard when you applied the brakes, it only slowed it like three or four miles per hour. Down at the 102 yeah. miles yeah. point, I wow. guess, like they said, just too late. Too late. Nicole, right. thank yeah. you. Thank you, Nick. Well, Pennsylvania state flags will be at half staff for the next few days. Yesterday, Governor Tom Wolf ordered they fly half staff at the Capitol and other state buildings to honor the victims of the deadly train derailment. They will remain lowered until sundown on Sunday, May 17th. And we're also learning more about the people who were on that train. Our team coverage continues now with Eyewitness News reporter Justin Finch. He's over at Temple University Hospital where many of those who were injured, they're still being treated. Justin. Erica, Yuki, good morning. There are still dozens still here at Temple University Hospital. Eight, we are told, are in critical condition. We're also told the hospital called in additional staff just to handle the sheer volume of injuries here. We're talking injuries that range from bumps and bruises to burns. And as they recover, we are learning more about those who lost their lives. Of the seven dead, five have been identified. Justin Zimser, a 20-year-old Naval Academy midshipman from New York City. His mother, Susan, spoke about her loss. It was absolutely wonderful. Everybody looked up to my son. And there's just no other words I could say. Also from New York, 55-year-old Abid Galani, a senior Wells Fargo executive. Rachel Jacobs, CEO of an education tech company based here in Philadelphia. The 39-year-old's family released a statement saying, in part, This is an unthinkable tragedy. Rachel was a wonderful mother, daughter, sister, and friend. Jim Gaines, a 48-year-old software architect at the Associated Press of New Jersey and a father of two. Derek Griffith, age 42, and the dean at Medgar Evers College in Brooklyn, New York. Temple cared for more than 50 Amtrak victims. 22 patients remain in treatment, eight in critical condition. Of the 243 people reported aboard Amtrak 188, some 200 were said to be injured. The injuries ranging wide, from bumps and bruises to broken bones to burns. 30 were taken to Hanuman Hospital. Rajan Shah is one of them. He suffered injuries to his vertebrae, back, and ribs. He says when the cars overturned and the lights went out, the trauma set in. It took a few minutes, I think, for everyone to realize uh, the amount of pain that they were in, and that's when you really started to hear the screaming. 
and he has days of recovery now ahead. There were also several dozen taken to Aria Frankfurt and Tarasel hospitals, Einstein, as well as Penn Presbyterian. We are told that many at this time have been released, so they are also now recovering. We are live in North Philadelphia. I'm Justin Finch, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Justin. And let's remind everyone for more information on the Amtrak tragedy, you can go to our website, cbsphilly.com. You can see the latest video, pictures, and news conferences from the investigators. In other news this morning, all lanes of the Pennsylvania Turnpike have reopened after a four vehicle crash shut it down late last night. Police say it all began when a trash truck struck an overpass at Camp Hill Road in Upper Dublin. The other three vehicles struck debris, causing this tractor trailer hauling paper to overturn. The truck driver was taken to the hospital. His injuries are unknown at this time. And as we continue this morning, we have new information on the hit and run that injured four Philadelphia police officers. Also ahead, the search for a missing helicopter in Nepal. Six U.S. Marines were on board delivering aid for hurricane victims when they just vanished. And Natalie Holloway disappeared 10 years ago in Aruba. And now there's word of new information from a possible witness to her murder. Details when we come back. New this morning, the Taliban is claiming responsibility for a deadly attack on a guest house in Kabul. Gunmen stormed the restaurant of the Park Palace Hotel in the Afghan capital as it was hosting a party for foreigners. An American is among the five who were killed. Dozens of guests were trapped inside as gunfire erupted. The siege ended earlier this morning. And the search continues for a U.S. military helicopter missing in Nepal. The aircraft carrying six Marines and two Nepalese soldiers disappeared Tuesday while delivering aid to earthquake victims. The pilot had reported fuel problems. This happened as Nepal suffered its second major quake in less than three weeks. Right now, just past 6.13, I'm going to check in with Katie. And a downright chilly start in some areas, huh? It really is. And isn't it funny how your perspective changes when we've been sort of just spoiled with above average warmth for a while now? Now we're just back to normal, really. Storm scan three, totally empty. High pressure in place. That's your story here today. It's just a beautiful day with comfortable humidity. But I show you this graphic because down the road, that humidity is going to start creeping up a little bit. Nothing terribly steamy or oppressive by this upcoming weekend, but we are tracking a warm front by that point. So that's going to not only warm you up, but also bring in more moisture to add to the moisture content in the air. 
and that's where you get the humidity from 50 degrees currently at the airport. That's not terrible, but there is still a hint of a breeze to make it feel that much cooler. Check out Mount Pocono, the 36 degrees, and it is also quite chilly across some of our Pineland areas in southern New Jersey. So the more remote your suburb, the colder it's probably going to be this morning. I dress in layers because later today, a beautiful day, 73 in sunshine with that low humidity continuing and more clouds start to build as early as tomorrow with scattered showers and storms by the weekend. Victoria, thank you so much, Katie, and good morning, everyone. So we're continuing to update you on the Amtrak status uh, as a result of yesterday's tragedy. If you are traveling or trying to travel Amtrak, please note that they have suspended service still between Philadelphia and New York. However, they're running modified schedules between Philadelphia and Harrisburg, New York and Boston, and also Philadelphia and D.C. If you are traveling the Trenton line or trying to, that has been suspended. The Atlantic City Rail Line is shuttle busing between 30th Street and Pensacola. New Jersey Transit is cross honoring, and due to increased volume, they've added additional trains to the West Trenton Line, and the Market Frankfurt Line will be making all stops. Also, around Frankfurt Junction, Frankfurt and Castor, uh, they're being, these intersections are being directed by police, and also the Wheat Chief Lane is still closed as a result, uh, again, of yesterday's tra tragedy. In the Bustleton section of Northeast Philadelphia, Grand Avenue is closed at Welsh. We're going to take a live look now uh, where Red Lion Road would be your best alternate here. And if you're a Northeast commuter, this is right at that curve. It's a very dangerous curve that you've got to go extra slow at, and that is uh, definitely something to be mindful of this morning or at least try to avoid. But stay with us. We're CBS 3 Eyewitness News, and we'll be right back. We'd like to update the Amtrak tragedy now as we get a live aerial look from Chopper 3. Investigators with the National Transportation Safety Board have not yet questioned the train's engineer. He has, however, given a statement to police. The NTSB says the engineer slowed the train to just 102 miles an hour before taking a sharp curve where the speed limit drops to 50 miles an hour. You can see crews there remain at that scene as the investigation continues this morning. This will continue for weeks to come. Mm -hmm. As Eyewitness News first told you yesterday at 5 o'clock, the Amtrak derailment could lead to criminal charges. Philadelphia District Attorney Seth Williams says his office is keeping a close eye on the evidence uncovered to determine if there will be a criminal investigation. 
We are monitoring the investigation. We are actively a part of the investigation. Uh, but it's too early right now for us to come to any conclusions as to the cause, any of the reasons, if anyone is responsible uh, criminally or civilly. William says if there's a criminal investigation, it may also involve federal prosecutors. Some victims of the train derailment were cheered by a pair of eagles yesterday. Nurses at Temple greeted quarterback Mark Sanchez and linebacker Connor Barwin. Several injured train passengers were treated at Temple University Hospital and they met the eagles just hours after their ordeal to bring some smiles to their faces. Great to hear those guys swung yes, by. Yes, very nice. Mm. Also, the Phillies honored the victims. Pennsylvania flags flew at half staff last night at Citizens Bank Park. The game was against the Phil's cross-state rivals, the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Phil's also observed a moment of silence, led as you can see right there by the Philly fanatic on the field. It's actually done going on all around the tri-state area and the nation for that matter. Such a tragedy. Everyone wants Such to honor tragedy. and remember those people who lost their lives and those still injured mm -hmm. and missing the families that don't know where their kids are, their husbands or wives. Our coverage continues all morning long. Let's talk about the sports page right now. The Phillies and Pirates play this afternoon at Citizens Bank Park. It's Aaron Harang for the home team against former Philly Vance Worley. The Vanimal, yeah, he's back, going for Pittsburgh this time. Last night, Jonathan Papelbon saved the win for Cole Hamels and moved into first place on the franchise all-time saves list. Right fielder Jeff Rancourt came up with the defensive gem to save the game. A play at the plate for the final out. Folks going crazy. Nicely done. Phil's win, 3-2. Patriots quarterback Tom Brady has until 5 o'clock this afternoon to file an appeal over his four-game suspension. Brady was suspended for his so-called general awareness that Patriots workers deflated playoff footballs to make them easier to handle. The Patriots, on the other hand, have not said if they will challenge their punishment, which is a $1 million fine and a loss of draft picks. Still ahead this morning, a woman who claims she was fired from her job for deleting a tracking app on her phone. We'll explain. And a new information in the Natalie Holloway case. A witness comes forward with new details that could lead to the discovery of her body 10 years after she disappeared. We'll be back.
just past 623, and man, talk about a day to dress in layers, Katie, right? Absolutely. A real dose of springtime reality. That's the story here today. We're just back to norm at this point, so we're used to, in the middle of May, starting things off a little on the cool side and then warming up from there, and that's exactly what happens. So storm scan is empty for you. Our temperatures reflect the fact that it is cooler out there today, not starting off in the 60s like we have in so many days recently, but beautiful baseball weather and anything else you got going on. I expect those temperatures to easily hit about 73 this afternoon with full sunshine. It's a really nice one coming up, Victoria. Thank you so much, Katie, and good morning, everyone. So still, if you are trying uh, to uh, commute this morning and re-plan uh, what you would usually uh, travel, if you would usually travel Amtrak due to the suspension, uh, New Jersey Transit is cross-honoring tickets. Uh, but again, uh, Amtrak has been suspended between Philadelphia and New York to running modified schedules between Philadelphia and D.C. and Philadelphia and Harrisburg. 95 is in full swing rush hour going to and from the area of Cotman Avenue, also around Center City, Philadelphia. So give yourself some more time this morning. Erica. All right, Victoria, thank you. Police chase a car down Broad Street in North Philadelphia. That chase ended around 9 last night at Broad and Glenwood Avenue. Both people got out of the car and tried to run, but they were captured by police. It's unclear why police were pursuing that vehicle. Also, four Philadelphia police officers injured during a hit and run are recovering at home this morning. The officers were released from the hospital yesterday. The suspect, Rudolph Kitt Jr., is still in the hospital. Authorities say he hit three officers with his car on Tuesday, then took off before hitting a fourth. Eyewitnesses say that Kitt was on medication after a recent heart surgery, and that may have caused him to hit the officers. What happening today, a federal jury considers the sentence for the convicted Boston Marathon bomber. Will he be put to death or spend life in prison? 21-year-old Johar Sanayev was convicted in the Boston Marathon bombing in April 2013 that killed three people and injured more than 260. The defense claims Sanayev's older brother led him down a path of terrorism. It must be a unanimous decision to impose the death penalty. Well, nearly 10 years after Natalie Holloway vanished in Aruba, a new alleged witness has come forward with possible new clues. Holloway was 18 when she disappeared during a high school graduation trip. The new alleged witness says the Texas native's body is hidden in a crawl space at an Aruba resort, which was under construction at the time. Holloway's father reportedly returned to Aruba to follow up on those new clues, but hard to believe it's been 10 years. It really is. It really and is. And the poor family still not having any answers. I can't wait to see what the results are of that trip. Right, and see what, what this happens. comes Funding to. Everything to closure. Coming up in our next half hour, right when the news this morning, our team coverage of the deadly train derailment continues. Jan? Big questions remain in this train derailment. What was this engineer doing and why was this train traveling at more than twice the limit? I'm Jan Carabello live on scene coming up the full investigation. We're also hearing from families worried about their loved ones who are still missing after this derailment. More on that. And Victoria has the latest on Amtrak schedules and Katie has a look at your forecast. We'll be back at the bottom of the hour. Good morning.